So here we are again with another section of Todd's Turf Tips. Uh, today we're going to look at, uh, as you see here, some bunker work. So what we have here is a bunker that's traditionally been used for teaching purposes. Um, we've let it go this summer. We've had some other construction projects going on. And so what we thought would be a great idea would kind of do kind of a pseudo bunker restoration. Uh, but mostly what we want to focus on is just the edging portion of things. I want to show you what I think is a pretty quick and easy way to maintain the integrity of that bunker. One thing we don't want to do when we're raking bunkers or edging bunkers, excuse me, is expand the size of that bunker. We want to keep that bunker was built to a certain spec specification, certain size. We want to try to keep that integrity. First thing we want to do is go around the bunker. We're going to obviously pull all the weeds out, get everything playable. Um, and at that same time, what we're going to want to do is grab, you know, some guys will take out a yardstick, maybe find a big metal uh, rock probe, put some markings on it. Um, but, but all we're looking for, we can use a, a, a bunker rake. Um, it's just to maintain our, our two to four inches or so on the edge and four to six inches or so of sand in the middle of the bunker. So you can just take your rake handle, stick it into the ground, you know, you've got about six inches there. So you have a good idea of where, how, how much sand you have throughout the bunker. So I've already done this this morning already. I know we have good sand depths everywhere. Um, so we know that we're good in this bunker, but if we weren't good, what we'd want to do is maybe use a bunker rake, or if we have a couple of burly guys, we could use some shovels and some, maybe some big landscape rakes, but we'd want to distribute the sand evenly and get everything pushed back to where it needs to be so we have consistent depth throughout the bunker. Uh, like I said, that's already been done. We've got a high flashing face over here. We're not going to worry about trying to push sand up to that. That's not the in intent or the style of this bunker, so we want to have some kind of a lip. So here we've got, we've got, again we've got Warren over here and this is the rest of our, our crew that's left. We've had a couple students leave for the summer and go back to different schools. Um, we've got Josh and Emily and John helping us out. But you'll see it's not going to take long to get all, all these weeds out of here. Okay, so now we've gone through, cleaned up all the weeds. What did we get? Almost three buckets worth. That's pretty good. So now what we're going to want to do, as you see here, Warren's over here raking up some of the the material from the big oak tree. We want to make sure we, we get as much debris out of the bunker as possible because we don't want to, when we go ahead and rake it, we don't want to, you know, work that stuff into the bunker so someone finds that with their, with their golf shot down the road. So, like I said, there's a number of different ways to go about edge of bunkers, but this is what I want to, want to show you guys as being what I think is probably the easiest, the quickest, um, fastest way, as long as you have that edge the integrity of that edge has been maintained. If, you're, if your intent is to go out and to actually re physically remove sod, this probably isn't the best tool. But if you want to do it in an easy and fast way, this is a pretty good way to do it. Um, so this is what's called the Red Max Reciprocator. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and use this unit. Um, what this does is it's a reciprocator. So it's got two sets of blades, and these blades are going to spin back and forth. They're not going to spin in a circle. They're just going to sit and go like that. So we can run right along the edge, and we're just going to chew up any, any, any tissue that's made its way inside the bunker, we're just going to clean that up and take care of that. Again, we're not going to try to go into the existing side and start, start making our bunker bigger. Um, but with that being said, because those are going like that, it's not going to spit a whole lot of sand. But when our, our finishing touch will be to take our weed eater and come back through with that and clean that up. And when we use that, we're definitely going to want to have a pair of pants on. It could be rain pants, um, just a regular pair of long pants, something to cover up your shins because it's going to fling some sand at you. So I'm just going to go ahead and put those on right now. All right, so here we've, we've got the Red Max Reciprocator. I told you a little bit about how it operates. So what we want to do when we're edging this bunker, like I said, we're not trying to take any soil or any sod off of the bunker. So we're going to run this thing at a perpendicular angle, and we're just going to take out just the tissue, just the leaf, the blades, as little of, of the plant as possible. We want to dig this thing, get this, this thing at a straight up and down angle. It's going to go into the sand about maybe two inches or so. We'll go around the bunker, as you can see, we're only going to be able to go one direction. Well, we can go the other direction, but it might be a little more, you know, inconveniencing for us to walk up on the on the on the in the grass and make our way around that way. So I like to go this way. And then when we're all done, we're going to come in at a 90 degree angle, right to where we just cut, and make sure these blades actually go inside the turf. We, we want to kind of prune those roots of the grass that's there. The grass we're leaving behind, we want to kind of stunt that grass, kind of shock it make sure that it's not going to grow too fast because what we, you know, what we want to have to do is maybe do this activity maybe once a year, twice a year at the very, very most. But if we're, if we're managing our edges right when we're raking throughout the season, if we're raking, when we do our hand raking along the edges, this should really be something we really only have to do once a year at the most.
the, the only downfall of using this machine is that you've got this machine right up next to your ear. So you want to make sure you have some ear protection. And you can see I've got eye protection on as well. So you're going to want to run this thing at full throttle. If you're not, then you're not going to get the real good clean cut. So, now what we're going to want to do is just go ahead, make one quick lap around the edge with our buckets, pull up any of this stuff here that we clipped off, okay, take care of that, so our, our good assistants are going to do that real quick. So then the one thing we want to make sure we're looking at on the face of that, where we've got some soil, we don't want to have any contamination. Folks pay good money to play golf at your golf course, they expect, unfortunately for better or worse, good quality bunkers nowadays. Um, and soil getting contaminated into that sand is a sure way to really do a number on your bunkers. It'll firm things up, drainage will become an issue, and it just won't be much fun to, to maintain and or play out of. So then once, once we get our edges all cleaned up, the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead with our weed eater and just go through and make one more, one more pass around the edge. And just clean up just on the edges, just a little bit, try to set, the, again, set that grass back, kind of stunt it. Now we've got everything good and cleaned up. We're going to grab the weed eater. Again, it's going to get a little bit loud. So we're going to want to have ear protection. Um, when, we, when we do use the weed eater, another thing we want to make sure we have access to is a face shield because we don't want to be flinging any sand. So, and, and again, you saw with the reciprocator, we didn't need to necessarily worry about that because of the way that blade action is. Okay, so now we've got everything cleaned up, we we'll want to make one more quick walk through and grab any bigger chunks of grass that may have been left behind. So all we're trying to do is just smooth out the surface, take care of any footprints that we caused through our raking and our, or, uh, through our edging process. We want to make it so it's a, you know, a fair surface to hit out of. Again, it's, it's a bunker, so it's questionable whether or not we should spend a whole lot of time and make it real fair for, for the people having to hit out of them. But make it something, you know, you want to leave it. Leave it in a condition where you'd be happy with it if you hit your ball in there. I know I wouldn't be happy if I hit my ball in a bunker, period, but I'd at least want to have a good lie when I ended up in there. So again, like I said, they have mechanical rakes where you could do this, but what we want to do when we're raking the bunker is just make sure we leave all that sand where it is. Uh, if we're, if, when we get to our edge, our raking on the edges here, I'll show you, we don't want to pull too much sand away. We don't want to have too much sand up on the edge of a bunker, especially if it's a real steep bunker face. Um, then you can get balls that'll plug in there. So when the guys use a mechanical rake, they'll spin circles in the bunker. And the reason you want to spin circles is that you always want to be bringing sand up at the same time you're taking it away. If you were just to make one pass along the edge, you'll start pulling all that sand away from the edge. Then before you know it, you'll be looking at bare soil. You know, that's where we were talking about trying to make sure we have that two to four inches along, along the edge. Okay, so now we've got Everything raked. And then this is this is what I think is probably the most important part to maintaining the integrity. Is when you use the leaf rake, you know, a lot of guys will get in the habit of maybe bringing sand up like this. That's okay, maybe. Um, a lot of guys maybe may do something like this, just rake right along the edge. That might be okay, but what I want to do is I want to maintain a nice fluffy edge. I want to maintain a defined line. So what I like to see the guys do is keep half of that rake in the grass the other half right along the edge of the bunker, so you're making sure you're going to, going to get a con consistent level of sand right along the, your bunker edge. And of course we've got, you know, the, the steeper face here where we're obviously not going to be able to keep half the rake in there, but again you just want to kind of 
pistol on your butt for starters. Put this one right along the edge. Because my philosophy is if you can if you're fluffing the grass, then no matter what, you're not gonna be able to bring any sand up onto the edge of that bunker. And, uh, and sooner or later convert that bunker edge to to kind of a mess, an undefined line. So you know again this is kind of an extreme bunker where we do have a pretty good lip. Um, a lot of golf courses may not have such a lip and it's a lot easier to just keep that rake on that fine line. But I would even go as so far as to have my guys go clockwise and counterclockwise when they're raking bunkers. So if they raked them clockwise one day, they'd rake them counterclockwise the next day. So that grass would be fluffed back up the other way, always maintaining that line. So then we're going to put the rakes back in. A lot of places will have, um, you know, the United States Golf Association does not have a set way where rakes or how rakes should be placed back into the bunker or if they should be left on the edge. Really it comes down to the superintendent and what's going to be probably easiest for him or if his membership has a specific way they'd like to see it happen, that's great too, as long as everyone's on the same page. Um, I used to, up until not too long ago, really prefer them in the bunker for the most part because I'm, my guys are working on the bunkers more often than they're mowing the edges and it's a lot harder for the guys mowing the edges to get off their machine and move the rakes. So if we keep them in the bunker, it's just a good, good habit for the you know, if, these, if the bunkers are getting raked two or three times a week, maybe in some, some golf courses might even be five or six or even seven days a week, they're getting more attention than the turf around the bunkers. So those people that are out there on a regular basis can put, get these rakes back into the bunker. The more the players see them in the bunker, the more they'll get in the habit of putting them back in the bunker. Um, but what we want to do is keep them away from the play side of the green. So you want to give a ball a chance to run out of a green without hitting a bunker. So you want to keep them surrounding the, the flag stick, but not necessarily on that front face. Um, and that's exactly how a lot of places do it. They keep them along the edge like that. That's how I like to see it up until not too long ago. Where I, I think actually placing them in at an angle off of the bunker face at that, I kind of call it a T, T for Todd. I just think if more people see that, it's a lot easier for the golfers to recognize and understand that's how it should be. It kind of sticks out and it, it makes, makes a little bit of sense because then, you know, you don't have a, a rake hung up on the edge here, if a golf ball comes in here and rests against that rake handle, if you lift that rake handle up, you're going to get penalized in the game of golf. That's a, that's a stroke penalty or two stroke penalty. So you can minimize some of that confusion by putting it like that. If, typically if a ball hits that, it's either going to run down or it's going to stay there, but you can lift it up and it's probably not going to help it go down any. The biggest lesson is to make sure you just keep that edge nice and crisp.